Howdy, howdy, everyone. Chris here. Welcome back to Garage Noise. And on this episode, we're going to talk about rear end collisions. And if you get hit in the rear end, is it something that you should try and fix? Or is it something that you want to leave to a professional body shop? There's a few things you want to look for. I'm going to show you those today. So the first thing we want to do is inspect the vehicle's damage. A quick visual inspection of this Honda Civic, and we can see that the rear bumper obviously needs to be replaced. It's been severely damaged along with this bumper insert. So those can be easily replaced. That's something you can easily do at home. The rear reinforcement bar also sustains some severe damage here, so that will need to be replaced. And that is just a bolt-on component, so that's easily done at home as well. But my main concern is when you're inspecting your vehicle, you want to make sure that that impact did not travel the rest of the vehicle and damage the frame, the uh, inner structure, or the floor. So we need to pop open this trunk and take a look for any hidden damage on the floor, the inner structure, the tail pan, or that frame rail. And the first thing I notice when I open up this trunk is I can look on the floor and I can see there's water and moisture buildup on the bottom of this floor. So that gives me an indication that it's been leaking. So my suspicion is that the impact flex that rear tail pan broke the seal on the from the trunk to the rear tail pan and caused it to leak. So we need to make sure that gets straightened out. If this collision traveled past the impact absorber, what it's going to do is it's going to show in the form of a kink or a bend on the frame or the inner structure or the floor pan. So that's what we're looking for here. We're just evaluating it, looking for any obvious kinks or bends that are not natural to this floor. You'll also want to inspect your frame rail from the outside, and we're looking for any kinks or bends that do not look natural. And it doesn't look like this impact has traveled beyond that absorber, and that's what the absorber's job is, to absorb that impact and not let it travel throughout the vehicle. So it looks like we're good there. We do want to inspect the tail pan a little bit, and we're looking on this rear tail pan to see if it was pushed in or bent. There are a lot of contours and curves in these tail pans, so sometimes if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be hard to tell. But I do know that the trunk took a hit right here. It scratched the trunk, so we know that this trunk was pushed in to this tail pan right here. And it bent that little bracket there, which is not a major issue, but that is probably what caused that flex, caused the trunk to be leaking, and something that needs to be straightened out there. I did notice that the edge of this decklet has been bent in slightly, so we need to straighten that edge out. For that, I'm going to use a body hammer and then a rubber mallet on the underside to straighten that edge just a little bit, and then we can fill it. So a collision similar to this, you can easily do this at home. All we're doing is bolting on a few different parts. We're doing a little bit of body repair and some paint repair. And I'll show you exactly how to do that stuff. So now we're going to block over this with some 220 grit sandpaper. I just want to get an idea of where the high and low areas are so I can tap down any high areas before we put a thin coat of filler. So after straightening the edge of the deck lid and then blocking it flat and then cleaning it off, you can see here that it's a real shallow little dent. So what we're just going to need to do is use some glaze in here. It's already pre-prepped with some 220 grit sandpaper. And then we'll just put a thin coat of the fantastic glaze over it. And we'll be able to block this out really easy and get this straight and ready for primer. Before I lay in some body filler, I want to tape this up. I don't want any body filler going over the edge of that deck lid and on the underside we want to keep it contained to this repair area. I'm also going to tape up the body line that's above that so we don't get any excess body filler in an area that we don't want to sand. So we're going to use a little bit of this fantastic glaze. Got a little bit mixed up here. It's not going to take very much at all. This is probably way too much, but we'll mix it in. Make sure it's all one uniform color. No streaks. So I laid it on this end and then I'm going to spread it over the whole thing. And try not to let it drip. Okay, so we have our filler here. Nice and dry. We're going to use our same, that same piece of 220 grit sandpaper. 
on this block and we'll just block it out. Put my mask on so I don't inhale any of that dust. And we're just gonna block it in a crosshatch pattern. You don't really need any guide coat for this. Uh, Go one direction, then I'll go the other. I decided I am gonna block over this with some 600 because I don't, I'm out of uh, 2K primer, so I'm gonna use a rattle cam primer for this. So I wanna remove those 220 grit scratches. So once we have all the 220 grit scratches sanded out with the 600 grit sandpaper, we're okay to prime this. So I'm gonna clean it, I'm gonna mask it off so we don't have a bunch of overspray going all over our vehicle. And I am gonna mask off on the right on the peak of these body lines and on the inside of this trunk so we don't have any overspray. And I am gonna use a rattle can uh, lacquer primer. It's a high build lacquer primer for this small repair because I'm out of my 2K primer at this point. Now, if you're doing a large repair, then you're gonna to wanna to use 2K primer. I wouldn't recommend a lacquer primer for something large. This is the primer I'm using here. And this is gonna be fine because I'm gonna have like two days for this to dry before we paint this. So we're gonna put multiple coats on this and I'm gonna let it flash in between coats. Um, when you're using a rattle can lacquer primer, you want to gradually build it up. It's It runs very easy. So let it flash off, put several coats on, and then let it cure really well before you start sanding it. Now I'm going to do a little bit of disassembly on this deck lid. We're going to remove that inner trim panel. We're going to move the license plate. And then there's an outer trim panel that we want to remove as well. And then what we'll do is we'll clean this really well before we start preparing this for paint. Okay, we're going to use 600 on the orbital sander to prep out this panel for paint. The reason I like to use 600 grit sandpaper is it's a coarse enough sandpaper that's going to allow that clear coat to adhere properly, but it's not going to allow these 600 grit scratches to show through that clear. Remember, we're not painting this entire panel. We're painting over the primer and then clearing this entire panel. So we need a, a sandpaper that's not going to show scratches through the clear. Uh, as you can tell, I stayed away from the edges. I probably could have done all this by hand, but it had some uh, scratches here that I think were in the clear cut. I just wanted to sand those out. So now I'm going to go around with a gray scotch right. This is a uh, gray scuff pad. I'm sorry. This is probably equivalent to like an 800 grit scratch, eight to 600 grit. And I'm just going to go around and scuff up all these edges to make sure we get good adhesion when we clear. And the reason you want to stay away from the edges with the DA, the orbital sander, is you don't want to burn through so if I'm just putting color over here, I don't want to burn through over here because now I've got to put color here. And if you were up against another panel, there could be a color variance or a difference in the color. So and we'll wash this again. I just want to get this all cleaned off. We've washed it before we started sanding. Now we're washing it after we sand. I just want to wipe it down, take a little look at it. Now I'm just going to blow this off and then we're going to tape up this vehicle, get it ready to spray. I'm going to use inch and a half tape to back tape this deck lid. I'm putting the sticky side on the underside of the deck lid and letting it hang over. And then we'll cover the entire vehicle with plastic. And then what I'll do is go around with a razor blade and trim out the areas that we're going to be painting. And we'll tape down the plastic so we don't get any overspray that blows underneath that plastic and onto the rest of the vehicle. If you're finding this video helpful, go ahead and tap that like button and leave me a howdy down in the comments below. Okay, so now this deck lid is ready to be painted. We did go ahead and sand over that primer with 600 grit sandpaper. We prepped out this pre-primed bumper as well, and we prepped it out with 600 grit sandpaper. Machine sanded it with the orbital sander, and then I went around it by hand with a gray scuff pad. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and clean it with some glass cleaner. And then we're going to go ahead and clean it again with some wax and grease remover. You can never clean your parts too much. And we also need to tack rag these parts off. So we are all ready to spray. So we're going to go ahead and tack this off, remove any lint or dust that may have landed on these panels. Now the gun I'm going to spray today with is the Segola 3300 GTO. I love that gun. I haven't used it in a while, so I'm breaking it out for today's video. And I hope if you guys are looking for a gun, you will check this one out. I have a video on this gun, a review and demo of this gun, huge spray pattern, and it's a budget-friendly gun, in my opinion, at right around $200 for the gun. Before we go ahead and lay our first coat of base, I want to use this Autobahn Adhesion Promoter. I like to use Adhesion Promoter on any plastic parts, especially bumpers with all their contours and tight areas. We need to get this coated real well so we have really good adhesion because the last thing you want to happen is for paint to peel off your bumper. Now, this was pre-primed and we prepped it, but this is just added insurance against peeling. And remember, if you guys are looking for tools or products for your project, down in the description of this video, I have a link to my Amazon storefront. And there, I have categorized and organized tools and products that I use, and they're going to help you with your project. And it also helps support the channel. Okay, now we have this bumper ready to go. We're not going to tack this off before we paint it. We've got our Segola 3300 loaded up with paint. And check out that gun. Isn't that sexy? Nice looking gun. And this sprays beautifully. I do have a link for this gun. It, this gun is not on Amazon. It might be a little bit hard to find, um, but I do have a link for it. And at 215, this gun is a bargain. So let's talk about painting your bumper and how you want to spray. So for this gun and for paint, I like to start out with a little bit lower pressure. I'm going to run it about 20 PSI on the air pressure and about two to two and a half turns out on the volume. Okay. And we want to overlap about 70%. Now, this is a black metallic paint job. It's not as critical on this. If it was a silver, you would want to be very careful with your technique and how you spray. But this is very forgiving color. So we're overlapping 70%. We're going to use a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. This is the easy part, guys. Everything leading up to this is the hard part, painting and clearing are the easiest parts but there is a little bit of you know technique and practice that goes along with clearing to get a, an elite finish but it's really not that difficult you can do it at home no problem and don't get me wrong you can run into some difficult colors some fine metallics some metallics with uh, different flops where they change appearance in different sun. Matching those colors can be difficult at times, but it all comes down to experience and knowing how to overcome those obstacles. And that's what I hope to teach you in the future in some of these videos that we're doing. So the main thing we're doing in this first coat of base is we want to get a good coat on, get everything covered, make sure we have all of our edges covered. Um, it's going to take two to three coats. What I always like to do is I like to get it covered and then put one more coat on to make sure. And that's what we do. Now, as far as the deck lid, I'm just spraying the primer right now, just getting that covered. And once we get that covered, we'll just blend it out a little bit. There's not really too much of a blend that needs to happen on this black metallic. Okay, let's speed it up and finish laying our base. We'll bump up the beats and then I'll give you some tips on how to lay down some glass light clear.
And now it's time to clear coat. And the clear coat we're using today is the Transstar Select Flash Clear Coat. This is a 30 minute clear that dries completely in 30 minutes. It's dust free after 10, fingerprint fee free after 15, and then completely dry after 30. You can cut and buff it and put it back together. It's a four to one clear coat. We're mixing up four parts clear and one part activator. I'll stir up the clear here a little bit. Some people like to shake it, whatever you prefer. You just want to get it mixed up. We are using the PPS system. This is a disposable cup system made by 3M. We just lock the top on the gun and we're ready to go. So on our first coat of clear, actually on this particular clear coat, this just takes one double coat of clear. So it's a quick clear, but look at the spray pattern on this Segola 3300 GTO. It really lays down a nice clear coat finish. And if you want to check out the review and demo, I will leave a link to that video at the end. Spraying clear coat is all about the air pressure and the volume that's coming out of your gun and your fan pattern. I spray with my fan pattern typically wide open. Now this particular gun here and most conventional guns, you want to run it about 29, 28, 29 PSI is a good starting point. I like to use three turns out from closed for my volume. It's not quite wide open. It's uh, about four turns is wide open, but three turns gives me enough material and an and the air pressure atomizes the clear coat well enough to give you a nice flat finish. You just have to really play around with your gun settings with the kind of gun that you're using or what gun you're using. But around those settings are is pretty good. You want to be four to six inches away. I always say that. They recommend six inches, but I tend to spray a little bit closer than that. It really just depends how you like to spray. If you move a little bit quicker, you're going to be a little bit closer to the panel. Now, what I'm doing when I'm spraying is I'm evaluating the clear coat and how that clear is laying down on the panel. With black, it's a lot easier than it is with, say, white. You can really see the reflection of the clear coat in the light. So if I see that it's a, I've got a little bit too much orange peel, I'm going to dial my volume down a little bit so I have a, less, a little bit less material coming out of that gun, and that's going to atomize that clear coat just a little bit better and give me a smoother, flatter finish. You want to have thin coats of clear, two thin coats of clear typically. Now, like I said, this clear coat is a one double coat of clear coat so you'll see me go over an area and then i'll go right back over it and that's a double coat of clear so that bumper is completely done i've got a double coat of clear on it and it's completely done and that's what i love about this clear coat you spray two coats on one double coat i mean and you're done and you don't have to worry about put, letting it flash off, putting another coat on it. It's good for small areas and bumpers. I wouldn't pay, it's not made for a whole car. It's made for spot repair. So I'm double coating this right here. And then we'll be done with this. And we'll take a good look at the finished product. And I am done with this clear coat now. I've ran, it's ran its course. So I will be looking for another quick drying clear for you DIYers. So now you can take a look at the finished product and see how flat this Segola sprays this clear coat. There is a few little particles of dust in this paint job, and we're going to cut and buff those out and wet sand those if we need to. But overall, it's a really flat, high-gloss finish, and you can do this at home. Let's button this up and take a look at the finished product. And here it is all finished up looking nice and tight. And if you have any questions about your repair, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you want to learn more about paint and body repair, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.